Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game, another one. I sat behind the wheel of Krusty again. Wonder why? I got steering. I had to shorten up a Mustang to wreck to fit in the car, and I had to do some chassis modifications in order to make all this work. I had to pull the motor and transmission out of the car as well. Uh, I got some other changes to make as well. But uh, I got it all done here now, and I'm going to show you how I did it, so stick around. <laughs> So in the last video, I went and built and installed the steering column for Krusty. Got the dash installed. I got this all worked out and everything. All got to be done now is I got to be finished welded in. Now the next thing I want to tackle is the rack and pinion. Uh, this now goes way back. I'm going to have to take the front off the car again. But I put a Mustang 2 front suspension in this car. What I did is I narrowed it 4 inches. Okay. I narrowed it so that the tire would sit proper in the wheel well here, okay, with these skinny tires. These skinny tires tends to stick off a bit on the cars. I wanted to move them in, so I ended up narrowing the front clip four inches. Now, I have a Pinto Mustang II, same thing, rack and pinion steering that I want to install in this here, but I got to take four inches out of it. This is a standard Mustang II Pinto standard rack, okay? What I'm going to do here, first of all, I'm going to strip this down. I'm going to take everything apart see how it works. This is steel in the middle here, and it's pressed into this here. I don't think I'm going to disturb this. I'm probably going to end up just cutting this here and putting a sleeve here and narrowing it through there and doing it that way. But i got to take it apart to see how this whole thing works to find out how I can narrow the inside of it, the actual worm gear and stuff like that. That's where the tricky part begins. So i got to get all the tie rods off, the boots out of it, get this taken off, Get it all taken apart to the point that all I'm left with is the, the whole thing is all in bits and pieces. So let's get this apart and see what it's all about inside. And there you have one scrapped rack and pin steering. Uh, it was a bit tricky figuring it out. Most of it came apart pretty easy. Uh, everything seems in good shape. Uh, this is what I got here now. This is the main body of it. And this is the main worm gear. Uh, as you can see, it's only on one side. So my idea is if I had four inches cut off the end of this and this machine with this threading here, it should be able to shorten it four inches and it should still work the same way. doesn't matter about the worm gear because all I'm doing is shortening. This is still centered because uh, I'm going to have to shorten the body of this as well. Uh, I'm looking at this here as it looks to be pressed on. I don't know if it would be wise if I... Just pull this apart, cleaned all this up, and then cut off four inches and pressed it back on again. That's what I'd like to do, but this is pretty rusty, so I don't know. Uh, but what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go see a friend of mine about getting some machine work done because this is pretty tangly. The end of this here, I figure, would have been just screwed on, but there's an actual cup down here and a spot for a spring and a thread. And this is what you're up against. You got this piece here with a little cup on the end of it that comes off. Won't fall off anymore. But that falls off. See, and the ball is there, and there's a little spring there. So all these here have to fit inside this as well. So I'm gonna go talk to him, see what I can come up with. He says uh, he might be able to machine it for me. So I'll go get that done, and then uh, make a decision on what I'm gonna do. So here's where I'm to. I got the rack all put together again. Uh, reason for that is because my friend was down, Phil, and we did a bit of a discussion on what we're doing here, how to mount it, where it's going to be mounted, how much we got to cut off. Uh, seems pretty well straightforward. Just all we're going to do is just machine the end off of this uh, forever how much I want to do. But what we're questioning and wondering about is setting the rack up for a bump steer and finding out because laying this in place... I figured it was going to be four inches to shorten it, but when we sized it all up, it seems like it may be more, maybe four and a quarter, four and a half. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to, I got this all put back together, I'm going to set this up in the car and put a tie rod uh, in set up on it and rig it up in the car and find out the optimum position for this rack uh, for uh, the least amount of bump steer or possibly no bump steer. 
uh, I need to get in here. So what I'm going to do now is take some time. I'm going to blow all this apart, strip down the engine so all is just a short block, take the entire front off the car, get, put all this stuff away, because I need to get down in here to be able to work on and get, be able to see what I'm at. So I'm going to go ahead now and get all this stripped down. Well, I made short order of that. Now... I've been sitting down here playing around with this, sizing things up. I have a whole bunch of problems going on here, okay? And this is one of those things when you come across projects like this, it do run into it. One of the dilemmas I had with this car when I was putting it together was figuring out this rack and pinion, okay? I have it all figured out now about how to narrow it. But the problem I never ever could like see in my head or is this angle here. How all this was going to work and, you know, universal and stuff like that. You had to have it mounted to size all that up. Now, first of all, here's part of the dilemma I got. This rack and pinion that I got here, okay, it was modified before for a hot rod, and the end of it was machined off and rethreaded, and this unit was put on it. It's too short for this car. Um, I went online, looked one up, uh, and Rock Auto got them, so I just said, shag it, I'll order one for it, and I'll have it done. Then that, that'll have the inner tie rods that I want. I got the outer tie rods upstairs. That there should be here, say, next week or so. So what I'm doing ahead now, going ahead now, figuring everything out. Here's the dilemma I run into, okay? I have a little tiny motor mount here, okay? And the shaft runs down here. I got the shaft laid in place here. Going to, it runs underneath the mount, okay? Right now, where this is to, where this shaft comes up through, it passes right up through here. It points up towards this section here. And above that, it comes up and brings up solid in this here. I can't come above it because it's too high for the shaft. I haven't put a third knuckle in it. I need to get the rack and pinion moved back, okay? Uh, it's probably better to do it anyway, because then uh, I want to have as long of an outer tie rod on because this here's on a steep angle now. The farther I can move the entire rack, there's a whole bunch of um, reasons that makes it all that much better. It gives me more room down at the bottom for turbo stuff if I move the rack back. And uh, if I can get the rack back underneath the motor here, it also fixes the problem with the... Um, the angle here, this here will pass up on the lower side of the mount. So sizing the, uh, everything up here, looking at it, the base pan, uh, so easy to get at that now to unbolt it. Uh, I don't think that this cross member here uh, can don't have to be like ahead of it or something. If I move that right back to here, I could still get at them front bolts and the pan will still come off it and there won't be no issues with it, right? So I'm sizing up this here now, and, you, and if you've been following me along, I've already cut this once already. I was not sure about all this stuff, and I'm just guesstimating at it, and you're going to run into this type of work uh, when you get into a project. You're going to have find problems, and you're just going to say, hey, I'm going to have to change some stuff. So what I'm going to do here now while I'm waiting for the rack is I'm going to move, take this cross member and move it back. I'm going to move it back about uh, two and a half inches. So here's the dilemma. A few of you have pointed out to me uh, that, um, you know, I should, I, my drive angle, pinion angle, all that type of stuff has to be looked after. And a few of my local friends here, we've sat down and discussed it. I put this car engine in the car at zero degrees this way, okay? This is level in the car, all that type of stuff. Uh, looking at it more, I'm thinking that this should be at an angle, okay? This should be down four or five degrees, tip back. I got a cut. The motor plates off, the mid plate off, and the transmission mount off. I take the whole works out of the car and uh, set the engine back in there. I'm going to remove the mid plate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the motor mount and the transmission mount so this is at an angle that I want it on. And then what I'll do then is I'll modify the mid plate then to fit that setup that I got there then. Got her all hauled apart here now. Um, all this down here, I got the motor mounts chopped out of it. I got the mid plate chopped out of it. Transmission mount chopped out of it. As you can see, the, the pedestals are still there. I just cut them off and got all that done. I cut off. We shock them back here. I had the transmission mount. I had that plug welded and everything on. I had to cut that off. Literally cut it off in order to get out. <laughs> That's it. I got to adjust that problem with the pinion angle, so I'll uh, address that when I get to it. But now I'm down here to the point now where I got this figured out here. The problem I got is I got to move this back, okay? Um, I got to try to get the shaft from the rack and pinion to get up the pass on the back side of this here. 
and right now it's passing off way over here on this angle here from where I got to do and I also got to figure out some bump steer I don't not quite sure where the rack is going to fit on this yet where it's going to be like if it was here is it going to be over here over here or is it going to be up or is it going to be down I'm not quite sure yet I got to figure out the location now the thing with the rack and pinion I got the new rack here as well this is the new rack uh, pick that up the thing with the rack and pinion is that it's going to be mounted here okay everything from here over does not change okay this entire side stays the same all i'm going to do is shorten this side here which brings everything over the geometry and everything will stay the same okay i'll be i'll be in the middle of the spline on the the worm gear on the inside of it so the worm gear probably goes from here to here i'm in the middle of it here and that's where that'll stay to and then all i'm doing i'm just going to move this one over uh to line up so it'll still work the geometry will still work so i'm only going to work on the other side of the, of the rack so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mount this side here temporarily to the front of the car put the tie rod and everything in place and get this centered i'm going to set this up go all the way around figure go from lock to lock figure how many locks it is and come back halfway and that will put me in the center of the the rack itself so then i'll know how much i got over here and usually it's about i think about two and a quarter turns and there's two and a quarter turns to from center so uh once i get that figured out i'm going to turn around then and, and uh, dig out the mounting mechanism and that figure out some way that i can mount this on the car so here's where we're to the rack and pinion my whole plan was to mount it right here okay where this face mounts here i wanted that to pull down like so onto that end of that piece there but if you look at this here angle, this goes up this way, and it's, and it's uh, it is not going on the right angle for me, right? So I've been playing around with the idea. I'm not sure where this is going to go. This is over exaggerating. Where it's got to go this way? I, that's why I must play around the bump steer. But first thing I got to do was got to get it to move back. If you remember, this was longer again. I had this set up so I could drop a base pan down out of it. Now the motor sits so high, and at the bottom of the base pan is way up here. Okay, there's lots of room here to take the bolts out of it. The bolts are basically right now, are right here going across the front of the base pad along here. But they're up here. So the nut is way up here on the top side, and, and the top side up here. So when you unbolt it to take it down, uh, there's still a lot of room. So when I move this back here, I'm still going to be able to get at it, and the pan will drop out of it, because the pan can come down and go back out underneath the bottom of the car. But the front of the pan will be here. I need to get this rack moved back, that's all I can do. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this up. I'm going to take, blindly take a spot here now. I think I'm going to try to move back as far as I can get it. And um, I think I'm going to come up here two inches and mark it and cut it out of 45 here and 45 here and chop that section out and get another piece of this here to weld back in there. So here's where I'm to. I went and took a scrap piece of steel and put down between the rails there, between the middle of it because I know I was cutting the center out of it and tack welded it on that fits in there tight I got a few tacks on it to hold that there so it doesn't open up or close up then I went ahead and I marked the head marked back four inches four inches and then I marked it on 45 and I cut it off on 45 and I cut the piece out of it all together this is my third time now cutting this cross member out of here okay and um, you know my original plan what it was for was for clearances but then when i put the bait the motor in it the motor had to sit high so i didn't really need like be truthful i could have left the cross member section in here and i still would get the pan off the car but you know you're running this type of stuff um you know don't be discouraged by it now granted i was a bit like i had you know the thoughts of i gotta redo all this again but still and all you just gotta get away from it and then come back and put your head into it and know that everything you're doing is heading in the right direction it's just that you had a you run into a little stumble you got to straighten it up and uh, go from there i'm gonna clean this up here get it ready i'm gonna put it in place i'm only going to tack it in there this time because i may want to change some stuff on this and uh i might want to move it back some more i don't know yet so i'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up now and get that ready fitted so i can get a tack well in place what have i got going on here look at all this all these rigs all rigged up moved around measurements done jacks and weights hung off the suspension and oh my what i'm doing here now let's simplify this and start from right here okay what i'm doing i got to shorten this side of the rack and i'm trying to get the position of the rack to find out exactly how much i got to cut off 
I should only have to cut four inches off, but the problem that you run in sometimes with cars, especially where I want this to be a drag car, is that you you hear of guys putting what they call bump steer kits on cars, which is they put them out here and they lowers down the lower ball joint and it has to change all that and do that. I'm trying to eliminate the bump steer kit, okay? I'm trying to position the rack and pinion where it's gonna go to take that into effect, okay? I gotta move from side to side. What I got done, I got two pieces of pipe that I cut up that I slid inside the two sleeves, okay? And they're welded to a piece of flat bar. Right there, okay? Now that is just clamped down to the cross member. I can move that around, raise it up, lower it down, move it left to right the whole nine yards. I'm only concentrating on this side of the car. I can't do this side because this side I know is too long. Right, because you can see where the tie rods two out on this wheel. Okay, I got to shorten the side of the rack. I'm just trying to figure uh, everything out. What is all this I got going on here? Well, let me explain it. Um, right here, this is the front of your tire. Okay, this here measures the movement of the suspension as it goes through its motions. Okay, when you look at a car when it goes down the road, the you think the tire actually goes up and down like this here, but in reality. The tire is doing this, okay? It's rotating like this on the suspension. So, the center line of the tire, uh, from tire to tire, gets smaller as it goes through motions. As it goes to the lowest point on the suspension, droop, um, the distance from the center of the wheel to the center of the wheel is smaller than if it was at ride height. And all the way at the, the acceleration, or like, you know, having the suspension fully bottomed out, it's smaller and the same way. So it's like an arc right here. So the problem I got to find is I got to position this to find bump steer, okay? What bump steer is, is when your wheels, and you're going down the road, I'm backwards to this, but picture this being the front of the car up here. When you're going down the road and you launch the car or whatever, bump steer has a, a tendency to push your front of your tire in or out. When you're drag racing, you don't want the tire to be pushed out. You don't want it being tipped in a small bit, but not out. Now I had this set up now, I have uh, this set up at two inch intervals. There's zero, that would be ride height. Then this is uh, on full depression, uh, that'd be two inches, four inches, and this way here is two inch, four inches. So this right here, right now, is if I was in drag racing mode and it was the ultimate setup, uh, this is where I'd be, okay? The front of the wheel, the car would be jacked up, the front of the, all the way on the suspension, and the tire would be still on the ground, and the car will be going straight down the track. Now, what I got done here is I measured this distance here. When I started off, this point was touching there, and this point was touching there. So when you measure this here, in between there, here's my measurement. Now when I come over here, you can see that it's tight, okay? So what that is, that's out. The bump steer is out on the front of this here, so I still gotta play around with the height of the rack. And that's all I'm looking to do. I think I had the positioning of it where it's got to be this way. I just got to play around with the height of it. So I'm going to play around with it a bit more here now. And uh, I'll show you, uh, actually walk you through this and show you the actual thing going through the motions. Now I have the car set up at ride height. And you can see the distance here and the distance right here. Okay. As I let the jack down, that will change. See it opening up. We got, you want both of it to open up evenly as it goes through motions. And that there is four inches of droop right there. That's what we're talking about. Because if you just done this from this point here and never took this into consideration, you would think that this is towing in. But in reality, this is towing out because the distance here is smaller than the distance here. So I gotta move the rack around now to try to get this here, position here. The same as this distance here. So I went playing around with this some more and done some more moving around. I moved it the the rack over this way a small bit. I moved it up and moved it down and I moved it up again and leveled it off. So I got a position where it's to now. And I've after moving this now through the motions. That's a full four inches of droop on the suspension there now. And right there, that gauge is there. And that gauge is here at front of the tire. So there's no 
absolutely no change in four inches on that there so it remains the same from bride height to four inches of drop so I'm pleased pretty, pretty pleased with that uh, I went and took some measurements uh, a dozen one measurements here and it comes out to be exactly four and a half inches I got to take out of the rack. I was thinking three eighths, but a four and a half uh, Sitting down reason trying to figure out why it's uh, a quarter was it a, a half an inch longer than what I actually shortened the thing and I would say it got a lot to do with the factory bumps there I'm removing it and uh, I'm willing to say that from factory there was a bit of it in it for drivability and stuff like that uh you know that type of stuff but i'm more pleased with having it at zero because of the drag car okay and by doing it's they're doing so i can run with stock outer ball joints or tie rod in sorry i haven't got to worry about putting a bump steer kit in it because my relocation kit is right here i'm going to set this up raise it lower it left and right in order to get the position now the left and right part i got figured out and the positioning of it if you look at it, it's pretty well lined up with that frame rail right there. And what I got to do then is I got to shorten this side here. Because all the shortening will be on one side. That's pretty well it there now. So I got it all figured out. Now I got to go scrap this all down, take it apart, and get it machined. So let's see what I come up with. Well, look what I got back. This is the rack and pinion. I had it sent off and I had it shortened four and a half inches. Uh, I want to send a thanks out to Phil Squires who done all the machine work that needed to be done and give me a hand putting it all together and figuring things out. Um, this is a factory one here. I figured I'd put it up here so you get an idea of how much shorter it is. There's the mounting points. And all was done with this here was this end here was taken off. There was nothing done on this side of the rack, okay? All this is original. The gear teeth are go from here to here. It's still centered. There's no machine work done on that end. All the machine work was done on this side here. This section here was popped off on a press. Okay. Then there was four and a half inches of that pipe was removed. Okay. Was cut off the end of that. Then this was pressed back on again. Because that's the distance I wanted. The end. All he done with the end of it was the same process. He cut four and a half inches off the end of this here okay he just chopped it off there and then he turned around and he machined it down drill a hole in it and tapped it for me so that I can actually take the original tie rod again so both of them now are pretty well are the same see machine works the same we got it done that's as simple as that it wasn't a very hard thing to do uh, but you did need someone with a machine laid and you needed to press. Uh, this was just cut off with a pipe cutter. And then it was pressed back on again. There was Loctite put on this. I got to put Loctite on these now when I put it back together. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to assemble it as it is. But the whole thing had to be blown apart in order to be machined. So we had to take it apart, put it back together again. Uh, it's quite interesting because threads on this are metric. And some of these here racks, these Pinto racks... I come with a standard thread on these ends. This one here, standard thread. A friend of mine done the same thing. Um, and he's racked, he shortened. The threads were standard thread. It was interesting. And this is an original rack and pinion. And this got a, uh, a female or a male style thread on it. And the outside of this, of this shaft is threaded. I figured this would have been a nightmare. And then there's little springs and balls. You see me take that apart earlier. That was an original style one, so... It's the same rack and pinion. It's just that this is just an aftermarket one uh, that was made later. And I'm thinking that a lot of this stuff here, these pieces here are generic to pretty well a lot of racks. So it's just I'll have if I have any issues with this here wearing out, I would have to source out the thread pitch and everything to make sure that I get the right one. But that's basically it. So I got my rack shortened. What I got to do now is I got to sit down now and I got to mount it in the car. So I got to sit down now and start making up the mount, mounting plate. Oh, here's that plating system that I used when I was doing the alignments. Um, you can just see just a couple pieces of pipe there welded onto a flat bar. And that, that was actually, you can see the distance there, the difference in the two of that. Usually these are bolted in and they're in a rubber bushing in here. And there's a big long bolt that goes through them. 
that goes through the chassis and the pinto uh but i'm going to replace them i scrapped an old race car years ago and it had a pinto front end in it and it had these sleeves are pretty neat there's an aftermarket piece slides through and it's welded on and the bolt goes through right through the center of it there i'm going to use these ones here on the project i'm going to cut off the back side of them there and i'm going to weld them but i'm going to do the same process as this here my my plan is i like to set up because when i set this up in the car i can move this around once i figures out where this got to go then i know as i can clamp it on i'm just going to weld it onto the car so i'm going to build this system here so it's the same as what i made here that way i have an adjustment there and i'll uh I'll cut the front frame rail so I can actually get inside of it. The problem I'm going to have is I'm going to have to put a bolt on the back side of this here and weld it on the back side of it. And just have it so you screwed it into it that way. Instead of having a bolt going right through. Because the problem I got on the car is one of the bolts goes right here. Okay. Somewhere around right here. And, and I don't want to put a big old long bolt in it. So I'm going to cut a piece out of the front of this frame here and just leave it open. And then when I weld the piece of plate on, it'll just weld right onto this here. Nice and straight, and I'll have I could be, I'll have it leave a big enough hole here that I can move it around a small bit. I have an idea of roughly where it's got to go, so when I build the piece, I'll uh, I'll set it up so that it goes into there and it'll fit that. So what I'm going to do here first now is that this is no good to me. I'm going to remove these as you looks. As you as you look, you can see that as well that on the back side here. I'm going to cut this off and see if I can just uh, knock them out of that there. And see if I can hunt down a piece of plate similar to what I got here to mount these two and get it ready to mount in the car. So here's where I'm to. I've been playing around here for a while. I got them pieces cleaned off and cut out of that piece of that cross member I had. These are going to be the mounts for this to go to like so. And then there's just going to be a bolt going through this here with a few washers on. I got to pick up some new washers. I got the nuts and bolts. But I haven't got no, I'm just going through my bin of stuff here. And I found two new bolts, two new uh, nuts. But I had to randomly dig through washers to find washers to fit the size of this here. So I need to get a washer to fit over that. So I got these here and then I cut out a piece of uh, quarter plate by two inch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run these through these here. I marked them off. I center punched them. Measured them uh, the distance apart between two of these. Found a center line, a center line. And all I done with the, how I did that... Is I put that there. That one's tight going in. Let's put that over here for now. There you go. All I did from there is I measured from this edge here to this edge here. That's the easiest way to get center, okay? Because this edge and this edge are are, are the same, the same thickness the whole nine yards. So when you measure from here to here, it's the same as from center to center. So I measured from here to here. I center punched it, marked it out, center punched it. This is a little bit longer, a little bit bigger than what I needs it. Uh, my whole plan is I'm going to have this so I can put this here and I can move it around and fine tune the rack. Uh, it's not going to go past this edge here. I know that for a fact because roughly this is about where it's got to be now, where I think it's got to be. That's where I found the best spot, spot for that to fit. And what I'll do is when I figure out what that's going to do, I'll clamp it in place and I'll weld that right in place. I'm going to have to cut the fronts out of these here. The, uh, I'm going to have cut a section of this here just to give me a bit of playroom like that. And my whole plan is to um, slide this over this. Oh, it goes, it goes under, deadly. I'm going to take this on here. And I'm going to weld this on around here. That's permanently part of that. Then I'm going to cut this off here. And I'm going to weld that nut to the end of it. So that way I got a nut on the inside. Because when I put this all together, I'm not going to be able to put a nut and bolt in it. And then this will come through and bolt onto the inside of it. And this nut is what will hold it tight. And it'll be all encased inside the, the front cross member. So I'm going to go ahead now, trim this up. Uh, get this welded. Get the nut fitted, fitted on it. And uh, get all that done. So I can start getting this ready for the, to mount this. So here's what I got done. I got the nut welded on the inside, so now I can put a bolt in through there and just tighten up on the nut, and I welded the nut on, okay? That's what I went and done there. And as you can see, I welded the sleeve into that. That has a steel sleeve. It's hard to see down into it, but there's a steel sleeve that goes inside that. That's welded on the inside, so it's nice and strong. Then what I did is I cut... I ended up straight finishing this off, because remember, I just had tack welded, and I got it welded on the top and on the sides. So I got to weld the bottom later, 
when I get the chassis off and flip upside down and I removed that uh, center brace head on her. So I had this finished so I didn't have to worry about it for now. I was debating on whether I was going to have to move this forward or back or back farther but I'm happy where it's too so I just went ahead and welded it up. I ended up, as you can see I got two holes caught here. Okay, this gives me adjustability. This is going to fit just like this here now. And I can move this around and I'll check where I want it to go up and down. I got a, a lot of uh, adjustment there on the rack, and then when I figure out where I want it, I'll weld it right there, just like that. That's what I end up doing. This is about, I think, roughly about where I think it originally was, right here. And I think that uh, when I get it all straightened away, all I can do is clamp it and I can move it around. Because what I want to do now is I want to install the rack and get bolt wheels hooked up with tie rods, center them up at ride height and measure from the back of the tire i'm just going to use the measurement off the center of the tire here now and measure it off it and run it through the motions i just put the jack in the middle jack it up jack it down and then it go through the motions of uh, the wheels and see what the alignment's like and then i can move this around to make it better and fix problems so i'm gonna go ahead now get this all rigged up get the rack hooked up onto it and uh, get all this straightened away get the bolt out of here get the other wheel back on over here and Start doing test fits on this. Well, I've been busy. I started this yesterday afternoon fitting this. Everything was made up. I just had to mount it in place and get it all working. Okay. And it is now dinner time the next day. I was at it all day yesterday afternoon. I wasn't at it last night. And then I come out here this morning and went at it again. I've got a good six hours put into this for sure just trying to fine tune it and measurements are crucial trying to figure things out i'm trying to get this with zero bump steer okay as close to i don't mind a bit of a bump steer on a negative side like when you're hitting the brakes uh i would like to have it so it toes in i don't want to see nothing towing out either on acceleration or braking i don't mind a bit of towing and uh, braking i'm trying to get it so that on acceleration the tire is still going straight I've been playing around with here. I've been moving this little tiny bit here, little tiny bit here, moving it up, moving it down, right? Um, you know, to make it sure that the rack is centered, moving the rack from side to side. And I tell you, I think I pretty well, I'm happy with this now. I'm gonna go in and take a break, have some lunch, and uh, just come out and run over it all again. But um, it is something else. Well, like you can look at that there now, and you can watch that tire. There's absolutely, that's off the ground there now, there's absolutely no movement in the tire front to back, like it's not turning at all like this, going through the motions on the rack. And I, I, it got pretty precise to the point that like one tap here and one tap here, and then give it another tap here and another tap here, and next thing you know, oh, I gotta go back and tap it up and tap it up. Like it was, it was getting very critical with the movement of it, right? I was getting right down to the nitty gritty of where it had to be mounted. You can see the plating system I got made up there. And like I had them holes there. At one point I had to remount the holes a bit more because I wasn't getting enough movement in it. But uh, I'm pretty sure I have this now. I'm happy where it's too. Uh, I'm happy with the motion of it. I'm going to go through it all again and set it all up and uh, like go up and down on it. And uh, just make sure that uh, my measurements, how I was taking measurements. I have this piece of flat bar using the center line of the tire and I've lined that up there and I've lined it up with the edge of the tire there okay and then I come over here and I'm just going to be off now because I'm in a different position but you see the marks this is the, this is zero at ride height and then these ones here this one here was on full acceleration and that was on full deacceleration, which is, that was all the way down, that was all the way up. And I think I was getting roughly around three and a half, three inches of travel upwards before the bushings would bind and stuff like that. But I pushed past it and there was no movement there either. So I'm very pleased with too. Uh, this way here, going through this motions and I'm moving the rack around, I haven't got to worry about bump steer kits out here. Um, you know, I want to run a stock outer tie rod set up in this. And I wanted to have it so that the rack was positioned to eliminate the bump steer. Because 
Bump steer kits, all they do with bump steer kits is the rack and pinion is mounted on the car and they can't move the rack. So what they do is they lower the outer ball joint on the, on the tie rod down and sp put spacers between it to, um, to adjust all the problems with bump steer. What I'm doing is the opposite. I'm moving the center of the rack up. I'm pleased with it. I'm going to go ahead now and get this all sorted out. Go over it a couple more times, make sure I'm 100% on it, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to weld that on there so that don't move no more. And then I'll have it, and then I can start working on this, putting the uh, steering in it. I should have this clued up today, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Now I pretty well got this where I want it. I've been out here now another hour or so after dinner, and I'm still at it. Um, I played around with it. A couple of things that I did is I made sure that the rack was safer. Because the rack kept moving on me. Everything I had was measurements, distances that I could physically see. That's how I got my centers and stuff like that. So I got the rack and everything centered off. What I'm doing here now, I must have did it about a hundred times. Okay, I, I'm going to do it once more so you can see exactly what I was doing here. I line up the edge of this here with a point at the tire. I was using the outside of the center of the tray there. Then I come over here and had a piece of tape with all I marked on it and I put that in the same position. That there was a zero point. I knew that that was two of these wheels were straight. Because now I take that there now, I turn it backwards. Sit that up there, walk around the other side, and that's right on. So my two tires are parallel. So now the next thing I did is jacked it up. Jacked it up till I've seen the tires coming off the floor. Of course, you know, so there's no springs in this. It's just the upper and arms. Then I don't repeat the same process again on the other side of the bar. I got another tape over here that I got. And what I do is I take that and I position that on the outside tire there. Now I'll go over here and check that, that here, that was right on it. So the tar has not, the distance between the tires comes together, okay, because we have suspension troops. But the two tires are not turning in or turning out. They're going straight through the motions down like this here. So that's perfectly straight there. Now the last one, check, will be, get this back up front again. That's full drool. Then I'll repeat the same process again. At this point now, I figured out marks that I needed to have and what they should have been, and I had it marked. And each time I would have to move this tape to show it. This tape up here, I'd mark it, I'd lay it in place where it's supposed to be. Check the other side, and that's where you got it. So I had no, I had a small, tiny bit of toe in on braking, which is good to have anyway. Okay, but I have nothing. Uh, she's zero toe. It's zero toe there, and it's zero toe there. This is what I was after, to get this section here zero tall. Now, 
If that wasn't right, I'd have to get down here and move the rack, change the position on it. I had to change one position at a time, because you couldn't make two. I either had to move it over or move it down, one or the other. And then I had to realign my wheels, my tie rods, and then get two wheels parallel again. And then I repeat the whole measurement thing again. And if that didn't work, I'd go through the whole process again. So that'll tell you how much trouble I've, I was going through with this here, trying to get done. It's a lot of work, but I want to get this right now, and I have to worry about it later, because it's going to be dangerous if I'm doing 130 miles an hour, and I got a bad wheel on it. The rack is not in the right position in front of the car, so. But I'm happy with that. I'm going to weld that in now. Now I got that tack welded on, I got like a two or three inch bead here, one in the middle, one on the other side, one on the bottom. When I blow this all apart, I'll fully weld it up then. I just want to go put too much heat in it now. I want to move on to the steering column mount, get this thing finished up so I got steering in the car. First thing I got to do is got to cut that mount out. So I made short order of that, got that gone, I'll worry about the mount when I go put the motor back in, I want to get the steering straightened away first, it's something that should have been done from the beginning, but I wanted to build everything else. <laughs> so now what I got here for that, I picked up, I probably showed you all this before, um, I got this picked up, this is a splined in uh, fitting, or uh, joint, from, that's a Pinto 1 or Mustang 2, and then it goes to a D joint, and um, I have this one here, which is just a, I think it's a three quarter inch round joint on either side, like a weld on style one, but I think I'm going to drill and tap this and put set screws in it because I'd like to be able to take this off the column at one point. I'll probably weld it on one side and uh, have a set screw on the other. And I have a, I had a piece of this here, which is D and round three quarter, um, the rest of it. Or just, hopefully there's enough there to use that. If not, I have a full set of D here that I can use. A bottle into that as well. So I got enough here now to make the column. I'm going to start from the bottom now, work my way up and see where this got to be cut off to up here and see if, this, if I got a notch to frame rail or anything here for the column to clear. So let's get started on that. So I got it all put in place there. I cut that off up there. I got it all snipped out. I had to take the, the column completely apart and slide the shaft back in order to get the knuckle on up here. I couldn't get both of them on at the one time. Easy to that or take the rack off. But what I do have to do, and I just got it cut there now, is I got a notched frame rail. It's uh, close to the frame rail there. I'm going to tidy it up a bit better than that. But I'm pleased with that. I'm going to weld the knuckle, this one here, onto the shaft here. This will be a bolt. This will be a bolt. That's on the shaft and a um, uh, spline anyway. And then this one here, I'm going to pin it or put a bolt or something in it up on top. i got to be able to take the column out of it uh, at any time or, you know, take the, the shaft and everything out of it. I gotta be able to take it apart, so I like to have as much of it as possible that I don't have to take apart. I might even weld this one here yet, I don't know. And uh, just turn around and pin one end and then bolt the other end there and have all that one piece. But I'm going to uh, mark this out now, clean this off, and get a piece of pipe now that I can put it in around an angle and uh, do a nice job welding that in there so it's got a nice relief in the frame rail. So I got it all grinded out. Clear it out around it. So I've got clearances. What I'm going to do is I have a piece of old roll bar pipe. Okay, one eight thick. Slide that in behind that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld that in place, line it up so it looks proper to the uh, shaft, and then I'm going to trim it while it's on the car and then weld it in. I'll trim it all up once again. I'll tack weld it in a couple of spots and then I'll uh, weld it in fully. I like to V out some spots and get some penetration there, so, but that's all I'm going to do, so. Now 
there it is. Nice tidy little job. All I did is I trimmed it up as I went and then I V'd it out so that I had, uh, when I was welding it, I was also welding it deep inside instead of just welding the top edge of it, right? I grind it flat off here and then I V'd it out and then I grind it, then I welded it and then I grind it flat and I done that all the way around and I just dressed it all up. So let's see what the column looks like in place there now. Here you have it. Lots of clearance around that. All the way around. Down there you can see light past it all. So now the only thing I'm going to have to do now is up here. I'm going to drill that upper one and put a pin in it. And uh, well thread it. I got some of them extra ones here. These things here. I'm going to take one of these out. One of the ones that I got there. And I'm going to just put it in temporarily for now. Because I want to get all this figured out so that's finished and it's just got to be fine-tuned later on so let's get it drilled out now ouch a few modifications in the grinder that's how much broke off <laughs> I managed to save it though crude got the job done that's all that matters I got the job done so that all screwed in there I got it all put back together there and just going to uh, bolt put in that temporarily for now because I'm probably going to have to uh, tap that or grind the edge of it. I might drill right through it and put a nut and bolt in it. I don't know yet. Same with down here. I just got that tack welded together for now. I'll, uh, I'll research that a bit more and uh, see what I'm going to come up with here because i got to be able to take it apart. And then i got it all put down here and i got it snugged up down there with the uh, set screw. And it's all rigged up. And the column's all rigged up. And look at this, turn the wheel, and the wheels turn. Well now, I got steering. That was one major undertaking, I can tell you. I say it's probably one of the biggest projects I had on this car that I had to figure out was this rack and pinion. And I'm over that hurdle now, and I got it all straightened away. Again, special thanks to Phil Squires for uh, doing all the machine work for me. And uh, I got it all fit in place there now. I got all the geometry figured out. It's all mounted. It all has to be finished in terms of like this is not fully welded. This is not fully rigged up and whatever. But it's in there now. I can move on now and remount the engine and figure out a motor mount for this side. But uh, I'm going to leave that there. Uh, it's quite an interesting project. I can guarantee you that. Especially with them racks. Very simple. You just pull off one end. Cut it off the pipe. They press it back on again and then have the, the uh, shaft itself the distance that you want to cut off on this side here drill and then uh, tap it and then bolt it all back together again very simple i was amazed that i could have shortened this up a lot more than this if i want to and you know i took four and a half inches out of this and uh, for me to get the geometry right it's strange because i only took four inches out of this here this cross member but uh, in order to get the geometry right that's what i had to do but anyway i'm very pleased now I have steering and crusty. I'm gonna leave this one here. I hope the tips were good, and until next time. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, hit like and share. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit subscribe down the bottom of the page. If you wanna to donate to the channel, down below there's a button, super thanks button. If you wanna click on that, it'll take you through the motions. I'll make a donation to the channel. We greatly appreciate it. We also got merchandise. Pop over to fitziesfabrications.com and check out our merchandise. We have hoodies, sweaters, t-shirts, and stickers. Lots to choose from. Thanks for watching.